Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. A lot of great news today, guys. Some interesting updates. I mean, today is uh, kind of a weird day. Cryptic Poet here posting this. It's looking as though we could be moving into bullish territory. He's saying here, take a look at the XRP chart on the four hour time frame and look out for that golden cross. Well, guys, I've got XRP up here on the daily right now. You guys can see over the last day, we did see a swing up. And if I throw this actually on the hourly, you guys can see this a little better. Now we have come down a little bit over the last uh, couple of hours here in the early morning today, Sunday, July the 17th. We did actually reach a high of about 36 cents. So let me just take a horizontal line here. You guys can see we did uh, actually surpass this localized level of resistance here. Got past that and now we're uh, retracing. But guys, even on the hourly, take a look at that. We are making higher lows over here higher lows all right and uh hopefully this will also be a higher low once that is formulated and we're making higher highs as well so higher lows and higher highs on the hourly chart is this going to continue of course this is all going to depend on where bitcoin is going as you guys can see bitcoin has also been moving steadily upward right now bitcoin's trading at 21,300. this is bitcoin on the hourly here but, um, you know, there's still a lot of work to do. The entire crypto market isn't nearly bullish at this moment in time. We're just uh, starting to see inclinations. We could even continue, and I know this is still an option, we could even continue to move downward before we see that strong move up. Now, it doesn't help that we're hearing about all this FUD with regards to Coinbase. And some people here in the crypto space bringing up some interesting points, like Ben Armstrong. Coinbase shut down their affiliate program and are getting rid of Coinbase Pro. Recent history would suggest there could be trouble ahead for Coinbase, so tread lightly. If Coinbase were to go insolvent, this would break crypto, the crypto space, like we have never seen before. So, like I was saying the other day, this is a big company. They have IPO'd. Um, they are switching gears. It sounds as though they are restructuring, but Coinbase is on the stock exchange, guys. And if they were to go bust, whoops, wrong ticker symbol there. If they were to go bust, that would spell a lot of doom and gloom for the cryptocurrency industry. Um, not just for us within the industry, but for the people outside looking in. I think there's a lot of um, vested parties involved in Coinbase not going bankrupt. Um, I mean, I can't say the same for Three Arrows Capital and for Celsius and uh, those other companies, Terra Luna, what have you. But Coinbase, this is a biggie. These guys have IPO. They are the first big crypto company to do so. Uh, ben Armstrong continues by saying, but honestly, I think chances of that happening are pretty low, but we can't rule anything out after we've seen the past few months. Um, and some people responding down here like Ethersoul, do you realize they are public, right? You can see their financials, sir, LMFAO. Algo fam down here saying one centralized exchange could break crypto, nope. It would not stop all the remittances reaching the unbanked. FIFA, uh, the creator economy, copyrights, real estate, supply chain, entire countries onboarding to Algorand. Uh, so this is uh, an Algorand account here. The beauty of decentralization and being inclusive. So we're talking about two different things here. Of course, the crypto industry is uh, robust in its own right. Solving problems, this is where the future of cryptocurrency lies. Um, but if Coin but Coinbase is still a big part of this. They are one of the bigger exchanges in the US uh, and they have IPO'd, which means they have a level of credibility in and amongst traditional finance and Wall Street. Right now, we're not seeing the price of the stock reflect that. Trading down here in what's looking like a new level of support at $53.00 and 79 cents which just by the way looks like a great time to buy coinbase stock if uh if you guys are looking to uh, diversify into something else that's not financial advice by the way but anyway the context i think things to think about here john dean also bringing this up i expect to see a lot of fud about the potential coinbase bankruptcy i even hesitate to write this thread because as jungling points out below coinbase has plenty of cash and plenty of reserves i would expect industry leaders to never allow a coinbase bankruptcy so jungling tweeted this out coinbase has six billion dollars in cash and large crypto reserves they will be fine with that being said i just transferred everything off coinbase good to hear jungle do not keep your cryptocurrency on any centralized exchange this is why i have a ledger nano i have an affiliate link in the description it's one example of uh, a cold storage solution but you can use my link if you want you don't have to use it just so long as you have your crypto safe not your keys not your crypto so a cold storage solution that's what you got to look for john deaton continuing his thread here uh saying you know the reason is obvious a coinbase bankruptcy could set the crypto industry back back five years or more. The public perception of crypto being a scam would grow exponentially. Instead of smart and tailored regulation, we would likely get oppressive regulation. A Coinbase bankruptcy must be avoided at all 
costs because if depositors lost all or part of their money or crypto, we simply cannot overestimate the fallout. Perception becomes reality and what a Coinbase bankruptcy would symbolize regarding adoption cannot be overstated. So, I mean, I agree with this. Like I was saying, you know, an IPO is serious business on Wall Street and, uh, you know, they just don't offer those to anybody. You have to apply for them. You have to apply with the SEC. You have to be compliant. You have to, um, you know, be very transparent with your financials, so on and so forth. And they just IPO'd in 2021. So, you know, it's an interesting time for the crypto industry. It's almost like a tale of two worlds. We've got fundamentals, real crypto projects, building up and uh, creating that framework for a new financial system, uh, a new world, Web3, you know, NFTs, there's all this other stuff going on that is proving that cryptocurrency is going to be the future. And yet we have all this doom and gloom. We have talks of bankruptcies. We actually do have real bankruptcies. We have coins going to zero. And to that point, we've got feuds. We've even got feuds within the crypto industry that is not helping matters. Michael, at Val 5 links posting this, Michael Saylor calls ADA a security, while according to Hoskinson, the only real use case for Bitcoin is to speculate. And despite this, nobody calls BTC a security. So Charles Hoskinson recently came out and uh, had an opinion about this. Uh, I'm not going to read you guys this article, but I will link it in the description. Um, basically, here's what he said in a nutshell. Calling out Michael Saylor. What are your thoughts on Saylor claiming Cardano as a security? Well, you know, Mike Saylor is the tone vase of uh, this uh, cycle of, you know, uh, him and Jimmy Song of this cycle of crypto. So back in the day, we had Tone and Tone was this podcast. He's still around and I like Tone, but he had this thing. It's like, everything's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Oh, it's a scam. Oh my God. It's a scam. Everybody's scamming. He even had this thing called the scammies. It was his award ceremony, the scammies. So now we got Mike Saylor. He's like, Bitcoin is the way. Again, it doesn't do anything for real fi. I can't build a decentralized power grid. I can't build a centralized telecommunications company. I can't build a centralized compute. I have no identity solution. It's not programmable. So I don't have dApps and DeFi. I can't even issue an asset. So I have no NFTs, right? It's all outside of that. But don't worry. Layer two protocols that are highly centralized will somehow solve all of this. Great. So that's great. It's the best thing ever. And it's so magical. And who cares about the mining and all this? Everything else is scam and everything else is security. Nobody controls it. It's completely decentralized, far more than Bitcoin. It has more use and utility. People buy the token not to speculate, which is the only thing they can do with Bitcoin. They buy the token to use it for stuff. I don't know, medical records and whatever the hell else they're doing because it is real life utility. But that's a security. But the thing that you only thing you can do is speculate on is not. I, I think Mike's head is all fucked up and screwed up. Uh, you know, it's just one of those cases where he's he's dick deep, full dick in uh, with Bitcoin. And so, uh, you know, it's got to work. If it doesn't work the way he hopes, he goes bankrupt. Uh, so I, I don't pay much attention to it. And I don't think it's a productive conversation at all. And frankly, the most difficult, toxic and useless people to engage with are Bitcoin maximalists. They're not intellectually honest, like Jimmy Song saying that at any given time, a you know, proof of stake system, you know, somebody can just arbitrarily take all your money and shut it down. It's not honest. It's it's just libel. You know, it's it's not true. The protocols don't do that. And they feel they have no burden of proof and evidence, the statements that they make. And then they say the only thing that matters is their thing, even though their thing doesn't do anything. Just stores value. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, the potty mouth on Charles. But an intellectual guy, he's a smart guy. I gotta say, Charles is uh, one of the ones that I love listening to the most about um, anything crypto related. Him and David Schwartz, obviously. Two guys that really do know what they're talking about with regards to the actual nuts and bolts when it comes to cryptocurrency. So when he's calling out Michael Saylor here that he's all effed up, screwed up in the head, and that he's D deep into B into Bitcoin. I think that says a lot. And, uh, you know, I've been saying this for a while. Bitcoin maxis, they only have one priority to make Bitcoin the one and only crypto. One that rules them all, which we know is uh, just not going to happen considering where we're seeing cryptocurrency go today. Also, I want to make a note that uh, Cardano, Charles Hoskinson of Cardano. Cardano is one of those WEF coins, the World Economic Forum paper that was published last summer did highlight Cardano. And um, so, you know, it's uh, likely going to be playing a bigger role moving forward. All right, then there was this, okay, from Hodlers of XRP over there on Facebook, the digital asset for payments group. The moment is here. Jed McCaleb, his daily selling has stopped. So guys, here's a screen grab from uh, Jed McCaleb's wallet. Failed, unfunded. 
His automated script failed this morning because his balance is not enough. 1.1 million XRP left his wallet. He sold the last 4.2 million yesterday. So is this the case? Is there still some left over? Well, XRP Crypto Wolf posted this. You today just picked up the story. Ripple co-founder Jeb McCaleb made a U-turn on selling his last 5 million XRP. And they're saying, here's why. Um, I guess before I get into that, I just wanted to note here that uh, the reason, uh, I, I, I just have a screen grab of this up right now, but the reason they were stating here on this Facebook page was that the uh, the wallet is pre-programmed, it's automated, in order to sell X amount of XRP per day, and there wasn't actually enough XRP in the wallet to perform the transfer, and that's why it failed. But you today is coming out and saying this so Jeff McCaleb is apparently stating, according to this, he revealed on Friday that he is keeping his remaining 5 million XRP just in case it rallies. Mmm, okay. According to CTC News reporters, McCaleb stated in a Zoom call, if you think about it, it would be really stupid if I sell it all. I mean, what if it really goes to $589 a token? I could be rich. He continued, I don't know, maybe it's this inflation, maybe the cost of gas, you know but I just have this feeling that holding the rest of this XRP is going to give me and my family more security. I didn't know it was April Fool's Day, did you? <laughs> this does not sound legit at all. And where is this Zoom call? Does somebody have a link to that? Uh, anyway, this isn't the only uh, news organization that has picked up this story. There were a few others, although I'm very skeptical about this. And even if Jed did say this, uh, he was most likely joking. <laughs> I mean, really, if it does go to 589 a token... Well, I think it is still a possibility. Maybe I should do a video on that in the near future. And I mean, I guess speaking of 589, we should probably bring this up. Bearable Guy dropped a riddle yesterday and uh, I'm picking this up now. So here was the message, positive, effective, resolute, successful, efficient, verifiable, exemplary, ripple excites. A lot to unpack here, guys. This brought to us by Fojack here on Twitter. Before we get into this, I guess I should probably state, because some people have been asking me, uh, can I get a Bearable Guy t-shirt from you? Uh, I don't know if you guys know, I never talk about this. But I do actually have a merch store on the Working Money channel underneath, uh, it's a carousel down here underneath uh, the videos. And if you guys just scroll over, you can click here on uh, the Bearable Guy t-shirt and uh, there are a few different options. Regular t-shirt, you can get the hoodie here or uh, a woman's comfort tee with Bearable Guy printed right on there. Uh, so for those of you guys interested in that, I've got my own and I know when I walk around, people ask me, what the hell is on your t-shirt? And I'm like, well, you don't know unless you know. And then that just confuses them even more. <laughs> you know, sometimes I give them a complete wrong answer and see how they react. Yeah, it's my kid's drawing and I put it on a t-shirt. So considering where we are right now in the crypto cycle, considering we are still, you know, technically in a bear market, we haven't really seen any new highs. Um, we're starting to see inclinations that the market is going to rally higher. This is the total market cap. So this is the entire crypto market cap here. Um, and you guys can see, whoops, support or sorry, rather resistance is being tested here in this level. Okay, we really do have to get above that uh, $950 billion mark, I think. And then the next shelf uh, would be up here. So that would be over $1 trillion. We'd be in and around 1.2, 1.3 trillion, give or take. But I mean, really, you know, over the last uh, year, year, eight, nine months or so, um, we have seen nothing but bearish pressure on the crypto market. And, uh, you know, even as of today from the all-time high, the total crypto market is down about 68%. So, you know, I think because people are feeling dejected, including the XRP community, I feel like this is a refreshing announcement from Bearable Guy. Now let's get into this. Fojack here posting this. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the first letters of the phrase. Positive, effective, resolute, successful, efficient, verifiable, exemplary, ripple, excite. So that is P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-E, -E -E, persevere. And then if we take the, the capital letters here in the note, as you guys can see, positive has a capital O. We've got a capital C here for effective, resolute with a capital L, so on and so forth. That comes up with the word oculares. And what Fojack here is retweeting from NX is that if you jumble these letters around, you get the word carousel. And uh, I didn't realize this, but there are actually word unscramblers online where you can uh, put these in. So before I even saw that, I put this in a word unscrambler. And uh, carousel is apparently the only word that comes up that uh, uses all eight letters. 
Uh, it's interesting here because you can look down here if you wanted to only use seven letters or six letters, you can get some other words. But with all eight letters, carousel is the only word. So it sounds as though that this is probably the word that Bearable Guy was trying to convey to us. Now, what else do we know about the carousel? If you go back to the December 2021 riddle, so here's the official Bearable Guy post and uh, Darren Moore also noting this, the carousel here, guys, in the riddle. What Darren Moore is also noting is the uh, stocking here, okay, right underneath the carousel. The yellow stocking, and that yellow stocking represents the U.S. dollar. So notice here, too, that uh, in December of 2021, Bearable Guy already had posted this. The stocking is reversed compared to the green and purple stockings. Now, if you guys remember way back in, this wasn't that one, it was this one here. I believe this was December 2019, where we saw the stockings all facing the same way. It was either December 2018 or 2019. This was uh, an older Bearable Guy riddle around Christmas time of that year. But you guys can see here the stockings all facing the same way. Fast forward to last Christmas and now the stocking has been reversed. And uh, of course we know that that stocking represents the US dollar. Now, what does this mean about the US dollar? Could we be seeing a subversion of the US dollar? Well, it's interesting that we point that out because uh, I also saw this clip here guys from Anders on Twitter, reposting a tweet here from Paul Guerra. This is Raul Powell. And he talks about the US dollar and that we're actually in a wrecking ball cycle. Let me play you guys this just for some context. Looks like we are in the dollar wrecking ball cycle where if we are not careful, we are going to repeat 1985 all over again, which is when we ended up into the Plaza Accord. So uh, I urge anybody to reread the book, The um, Alchemy of Finance by George Soros, because he keeps a trading diary of the whole period of 84 to 85, which was a very similar oil price recession, blah, blah, blah. But the issue was the dollar. And the dollar backed off for a while as the Fed started cutting in 84, um, which was part of his big trade. His big trade was the bond market trade. The, the dollar backed off and then it rocketed higher, which is the kind of way that we see it now. There's a shortage of dollars. And if it rockets much higher, then we start breaking parity against the euro. We start, you know, the dollar yen started moving a lot. This is a bad setup. And there is a probability... And I don't think it's my base case that we we have a real problem with the dollar. And in which case we end up with having to have some sort of plaza accord agreement, which is something we should be nervous of because that kind of agreement is not going to be with the US talking about reducing the dollar as much as others saying we need to move away from the dollar, which is something I've talked about for a long time. You know, one of the whole thesis behind the Bitcoin life raft video that many millions of people have seen is about this very situation of, of the the strength and the dominance of the dollar. The, do do the US economy is 25% of the world's economy and 87% of every single trade transaction on earth. So it's everybody else's problem. And the world has kind of had enough of it. And a lot of people think the dollar dies from weakness, but I think the dollar dies from strength. So we need to be careful. These are very long-term charts I've been using, but if it plays out this way, then either in the next over the next 18 months we get a shocking dollar move or we get respite again and it plays out in two years time but mm -hmm. it it's, feels like it's gonna come one way or the other nothing can stop the dollar milkshake theory playing out so as raul pal states here the dollar wrecking ball theory and it doesn't look like anything can really stop it um, we can mitigate it, but, um, you know, it's still up to the Fed and a lot of other different bodies as to how the dollar reacts to this current situation that we're in. Nevertheless, Bearable Guy is uh, mentioning the U.S. dollar. It looks as though he is pointing towards the U.S. dollar uh, with the inverted stocking and also with this new riddle, the carousel sitting over the dollar. Now, what else could the carousel be representing? Perhaps the revolving nature of a world reserve currency. Now this carousel is becoming more interesting because uh, if you guys remember back in the video I did uh, on December, I think it was on Christmas Day actually, or Christmas Eve, Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, 2021 when that bearable guy did drop this riddle. I remember because I was going to take the day off and then he dropped the riddle and I said, no, I can't take the day off. There's a bearable guy riddle. We noticed that there was a unicorn on the carousel. So now it's becoming more clear. Could it be that this revolving idea of a world reserve currency the unicorn now representing a new currency, perhaps, perhaps XRP as that world reserve currency. 
or XRP not technically being a world reserve currency, but a new currency that the world uses. Maybe they'll give it a different name. I do not know, but it's all starting to make sense. So back to this, uh, Stefan Hubert going, you know, is it USDC? Enigma Ridworld here with some Gematria. Uh, Persevere also gives us 113. Interesting to note. Stefan Hubert also mentioning this David Schwartz tweet from a few days ago, to the moon. Anyone know where I am? So, you know, some people reading into this wondering, could this have a bigger meaning? Is it more than meets the eye? Ashley Prosper down here mentioning this. People have suggested I look at your posts. I don't normally do this, but Thor's hammer. Thor, Love and Thunder recently released, which is interesting. The clock here suggesting around that time. Also the calendar, the sun is shining behind August. So if we go down here, you can see right beside the carousel, we can see the sun is shining in and around August. So could this be a new timeline that Bearable Guy is pointing to? Let's go back up here for a second, just to uh, look at a few more things here. At Reborn13, also mentioning this, uh, the Lunar Orbit Rendezvous. Lunar Orbit Rendezvous, or LORE, is a process for landing humans on the moon and returning them to Earth. Interesting. It was utilized for the Apollo program missions in the 60s and 70s. In a LORE mission, a main spacecraft and a smaller lunar lander travel to lunar orbit. Uh, so S-E-C-O LORE. Was that decoded in the riddle? I remember talking about this the other day. There are 76 letters, the same number Mr. Loop had in his profile. Remember that tweet? If considering the numbers of letters of each word and not counting zero, it gives 58, which is the number of sculpture castle riddle words also gave once counting the words. Wow. Going deep here. Uh, Cowboy Crypto here also mentioning the unicorn here. And so there's only one unicorn. I have a feeling that that unicorn does represent XRP. And now I'm thinking more and more that we are talking about US dollar dominance. You know, even just going back to uh, these other riddles here, like the ship riddle, we have these three same colors here, Bitcoin, XRP, and the USD. It has been that way since the beginning, even from the time of the castle riddle from back in 2018. And so, yes, I should mention this, Enigma Ridworld also mentioning the carousel and gold, okay? So we have the carousel here and the gold color, the Queen's Jubilee. Also wanted to bring up uh, an interesting point from Fojack retweeting out Archilect's tweet. Now this tweet was originally tweeted on July the 15th. Coincidentally also of a carousel. And Bearable Guy originally posted his tweet on July the 16th at midnight. So something else here that is getting me wondering, are these two tweets connected? Should we be paying attention to the carousel specifically? The fact that it is over. The yellow stocking from the Christmas 2021 riddle, an inverted stocking now subverting the US dollar, is US dollar dominance, as Raul Pal suggests here, going to be a wrecking ball cycle? And could its downfall be because of its strength instead of its weakness? And guys, how close are we to ushering in a new world reserve currency? Is the carousel representing that revolving stage that the US dollar moving out, something else is moving in? XRP, the unicorn, and could this all potentially be happening as soon as August 2022, guys? Just one month away? I don't know, that's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.